Razorback head football coach Sam Pittman meets with the media about signing his contract finally and getting a little more details on that. And the Razorbacks are heading to the Super Regionals in Chapel Hill. It's all coming up on the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. You are Locked On Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome into the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. I am your host, John Neighbors. I am also the host of Out of Bounds. You can catch every weekday afternoon from 1 to 4 on 103.7 The Buzz and 103.7thebuzz.com. I know it's been a while since I've been able to do a podcast, and I apologize about that. That is not something that I like doing, uh, especially given the fact that I was on vacation for about a week, and then um, we had the travel arrangements that were going on with me going to Stillwater for the regionals. And uh, also, um, I may talk about this later in the podcast, but uh, some of the issues that I ran into, technologically speaking, when it came to being in Stillwater and trying to upload a podcast. So I apologize because uh, I know there's been a lot going on that a lot of people have wanted to discuss and wanted to talk about, especially with the Razorback baseball team. We'll get into that. But, uh, you know, there was a, a just it sucked. Like, it sucked being along this gone this long. So I apologize again. Hopefully you all forgive me somehow, some way and put it into the uh put it into the thing that um, i'll have to owe you another podcast or something like that i don't know we'll figure it out but either way uh i'm going to talk about the baseball team and, and really dive into that a little bit more in depth uh in the next segment because i know that there's a lot of excitement surrounding it and rightfully so but the first thing though that i wanted to dive into was something that actually happened yesterday with razorback head football coach sam Pittman. Now, sam Pittman, we know as a guy that finally got that contract signed and we know about all the the great things that are coming along with it and uh, you know, finally being able to get some momentum. But the thing that was kind of really uh, back on the minds of so many fans and I guess even the coaching staff and everything was about Sam Pittman signing his contract. Well, he did get it signed officially, as we know, uh, just here recently, but we haven't had a chance to really talk to him about the contract and about the details and all the things surrounding that just yet. And, you know, here's just a clip of pretty much what Sam Pittman thought about the contract and getting it all signed. Very, very pleased and happy with the contract and, and the incentives in it. Uh, you know, if I want to get paid more money, I, you know, we, get, we need to win, uh, win football games. So I thought it was fair for both. And I, I was very cautious that I wanted it to be fair for the university as well. And I think it put me about ninth in the SEC. And, I've only been a head coach for two years, and, and I'm pleased that uh, this will be my last coaching job. The non-compete in the SEC is uh, basically stating that stability, that's what I wanted. I want to be able to use it in recruiting, and, and we certainly have as recently as five minutes ago. Credit to the Pig Trail Nation for that video. So there you have it. Sam Pittman coming out and saying how that's the – way it all went down and that's where they're feeling pretty strong about how things are going right now and the incentive based deal that they have as far as winning games and getting more money for it and and everything but it, it, here's what kind of like what i know has been a discussion and sometimes rightfully or wrongfully so been a heated discussion about sam Pittman and the contract that he signed some people are right or always upset about this just because it's like, man, you know, you're already making big money and then you switch agents and then you go with Jimmy Sexton, which we all know Jimmy Sexton has a reputation and everything. And, you know, you kept telling everybody that this was your last job. Well, if it's your last job, then why are you trying to, you know, get more money out of the university? You're trying to work your magic with your agents and everything, trying to make that work. Like all that stuff was being said and talked about and whatever. But, Here's my thing. I think two things can be true at once. I think that Sam Pittman can be 100% honest when he says and has said many times, this is his last job. This is where he wants to be. That he's not going anywhere. Like, he can be truthful in that, which I believe he is, while also wanting to make sure that he's taken care of He's being provided for. He's getting the incentives to be able to win those games and to stay here, getting, in a way, paid for his loyalty and also having something written on paper like in a contract-based deal where it shows that he is a man of his word 
and that he is going to stay at Arkansas and this will be his last job and he wants to go nowhere else. Because as we know in college football especially, you know, recruiting is, is a big deal. And even though it's not really something that maybe people can put all, as much of an emphasis on when it comes to recruiting and the pitches that they throw, coaching stability matters. It's, it's something that I think is a lot more important than we even realize because we know that coaching, there's a lot of turnover. I mean, every single year there's coaches getting fired. There's coaches from big time programs getting fired. Coaches who are only at programs for a few years getting fired. You know, whatever it may be, there's always that element of, of coaches just, you know, coming and going. But, you know, there are some places, though, that try to maintain the stability as much as possible. And I think Arkansas is definitely one of those places for Sam Pittman. You know, it always reminds me of NCAA football. And for those of you who remember playing that video game and you would start dynasty mode and you'd have to recruit kids and you had to throw these pitches to them and you find out what means something to them. And one of the pitches was coaching stability. Well, the coaching stability isn't there. It's not there because of what the coach says. Coaches say a lot of things. All coaches do. They will say whatever they need to say to get that recruit, to win that press conference, to win over the fans, to win over the boosters. You know, they will say anything. In their own right, they're politicians. I'm not saying it's wrong. It's part of the job. It's what you got to do. But there's a difference between saying it and actually having proof of it. And that's what this contract was for, for Sam Pittman more so than anything, is about proving that he is a man of his word, proving that this is going to be his last job. So that way, when he's going out and recruiting guys, he can tell them, hey, when you come here to the University of Arkansas, I'm going to be your coach. I'm then, you know, barring anything that happens as far as me getting fired, I guess that's always, you know, but he's not going to leave you for somewhere else. And I think as a coach, for you to go in and be able to say that and show that, that's going to mean something to kids who want to make sure that wherever they go, they play for the same head coach. They have that relationship with that coach. And on the other side of it, too, you want to make sure that you're not having any other programs negatively recruit to, against you in that regard. Like negative recruiting is always going to go on, but this kind of erases the thing of people saying, hey, hey, well, you know, Sam Pittman may not be there for a long time. He's had a lot of success. I've been hearing rumblings that he might be going to the NFL. Oh, well, he told me that, he was going to stay stay at Arkansas. Yeah, well, coaches sell anything to get you to go to their school. I mean, have you seen his contract? His contract, he's only going to have a buyout of $2 million. That's chump change. He's gone. Can't do that now because the contract is backing that up. So I'm glad it got done. I'm glad this contract got done and got signed, sealed, delivered. And I'm glad that we can now move on and get into the real fun part about uh, – everything going on in the world of sports, but in particular, of course, uh, getting excited about um, SEC media days, which we know was a lot of fun. But again, I'm just happy for Sam Pittman, and I'm happy that the U of A got this done. seems like it's a good deal for him, and I'm always going to be wondering, too, is this going to be something that maybe sets a precedent or at least is used as kind of the, the gold standard of having coaches sign deals that are very incentive-based rather than – you know, just giving them huge salaries with huge buyouts uh, and, you know, everything like that. Like, I'm wondering if that will be go by the wayside because it needs to. Like, coaches, like, I think Hunter Yurchik always made a great point when he was talking about contracts with head coaches. He's like, firing a coach for cause should be the same as firing a coach for losing games. Like, that's a cause. Like, that should be a cause you should fire a coach for and not have to owe them anything if they're losing games. It's a performance-based deal. And if you're not performing, you need to get fired. And that should be something that should be a cause. Because, you know, I know coaches and, and contracts are so much different than what we have in the everyday walks of life, uh, us common folk. But I've always felt like, imagine in your job or in my job or whoever's job, you had a contract where, all right, we're going to hire you. We're going to pay you this amount of money, a lot amount of money, I mean, a ton. But if you don't do a good job, when we fire you, we're going to pay you even more. Or we're going to pay you just as much. Or we're going to pay you even 75% of what's remaining uh, as part of the agreement. Like, who wouldn't sign that? And also, as we saw with the case of Brett Bielema, who wouldn't all of a sudden get, you know, fat and happy and just say, if the job's too much or if it's too difficult or you're kind of just like, you know, I don't want to do this anymore. Mail it in. Just, yep, I'm done. 
wake me up when you fire me so I can go ahead and cash that check that you owe me. Like that, I think that provides complacency and it provides, uh, you know, coaches to just do those exact things because that's what happened with Brett Bielma. I think if Brett Bielma did not have that massive buyout, I think, which nowadays it doesn't seem as much, but I think it's like $12 million in that range for getting fired. I don't think he does what he does and, and handles the ending of Arkansas like he did. He either goes and just gets another job or he actually continues to fight and try. But when he realized that he couldn't win here in Arkansas because it was just because he wasn't the good a good enough coach to do it, uh, he was just like, well, I can either really try hard and not be very good and get fired, or I can not try very hard, suck at winning games, and then get fired anyway. I'll just be lazy. I'll get coaches around me that don't care as much. Like all those things just got involved. And I'm not trying to come out on Brett Bielma. I'm just saying that that's a that's a reason why we're starting to see some of the contracts that we see now. And in this case with Sam Pittman, very incentive based, which honestly, folks, to me, it's kind of the way it needs to be. We should all be, especially in performance based businesses, based on how we perform. Not, well, if you suck, you'll still be okay because we're going to pay you an inordinate amount of money. That should never be the case. BetOnline.net is your number one source for all the betting stats and sports info. Find all the latest sports development, news, and odds, including this year's basketball championship matchup, the NHL uh, Hockey Conference Finals, Major League Baseball, and, of course, all the latest fighting news and MMA from USC to boxing. BetOnline.net continues to be your source for all your sports wagering information, including live betting, esports, and more. So head to the website today and use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and actions at BetOnline.net, where the game starts. I did it again. See, I always throw the wrong graphic up and I get so excited because I'm like, oh, it's going to be a great transition. And I do it again. And you know what? I'm out of practice. I haven't done a podcast in two weeks. Leave me alone. Let's go ahead and hit that uh, segue intro music. Hey, you're listening to this. You are locked on Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, continuing on here on the Locked On Razorbacks podcast, um, I haven't had a chance to do uh, a really a reaction or even talk about the Razorback baseball team, which again is is on me. It's my fault, uh, but you know I wanted to you know talk about football first so we can go into baseball and kind of go baseball heavy the rest of the way because I know a lot of people are excited about it, especially with the fact that uh, Arkansas won that su- uh, that regional and Stillwater and will be moving on to the Super regional in chapel hill against north carolina now i will say this just kind of a quick little uh reaction to the game and into this uh the regional there in stillwater uh what what a performance by arkansas a gritty tough performance by the razorbacks i know that this team is not perfect this team is not the best team in the country i don't even know if they're one of the best eight teams in the country going at like if they went to Omaha, like I, I don't know what, what their chances would be. Like, I don't know if they're that level. I don't know. They may be, they may not be. But the one thing that you got to give a lot of credit to Dave Van Horn, and this Razorback baseball team is when it matters most getting into the foxhole, you know, kind of locking arms a little bit, using all the cliches and having the us against the world mentality and going out and performing. Because the way that this baseball team ended the regular season and played in Hoover, I, I, I was like, there's no way that this team is going to do much. Like, they look dead. They look dead in the water. They look like it's all over. Because uh, many of us thought that way. And I was even, I felt like I was even more optimistic than some, where I'm like, okay, well, I still think they can win the regional. I still think that they can do that. Like, I still think that they can at least be, you know, if they put it together and they play really well. They'll be able to do that. And even some of you are like, no way. You know, Oklahoma State's number seven overall seed, international seed. Uh, you know, it's going to be tough. Well, as we saw, yeah, Oklahoma State is a really good team. In fact, Dave Van Horn even said after the game um, that he said that was the best team that they had faced all year. So they were really talented and had a lot of big hitters and, and everything too. But because of Arkansas and their their grittiness and their just ability to – have that us against the world mentality they came out and just got it done especially on that monday night game which may have been one of the more intense edgier seat emotional games that i I mean i have so many razorback fans that i talked to that reached out to me as well and saying that 
Uh, they couldn't even sleep the, that night after that game because their adrenaline was pumping so much because of the excitement, the intensity, and, and everything. And I'm, I'm kind of with you. Like, I, I didn't sleep because I had to drive home from Stillwater here to Little Rock. Um, just a mere four and a half, five hour drive for those of you who care. So, but that was a, that was a very awesome and poignant moment for Dave Van Horn and this team to get that win, especially giving up as many runs as they did where the pitching was so suspect and for both teams because of how much pitching that they've had. And for Arkansas to get the victory and win seven to three, like it was just, it was electric. It was electric. And I can't tell you, like, there's a lot of great moments that you could take away from this regional and say, like, this was kind of the turning point or this is what your favorite moment was or anything. But there was not a time where I ever felt good <laughs> or confident that Arkansas was going to win any game, any game. Like, no matter if it was against Grand Canyon or Oklahoma State or whatever, there was not a time where I'm like, yeah, Arkansas's got this. No point during the game that I ever feel that way until one moment, one moment. And I'm not one of those people that feel this way all the time. But one moment is when it happened and that happened during the game with games still left to play that made me feel like Arkansas won this game and they're going to win this regional. But it didn't happen until closer to the end of game seven. So I'm not going to sit here and try to say that I had this vision that transpired in my brain. Uh, during game three, and I was like, yes, that is true. Arkansas will win. It wasn't like that. So I'm not going to say like it was some epiphany. But when Hagen Smith went out there, the true freshman, to close the game in the final game of the regional, he found himself in quite a pickle where bases were loaded, there were two outs, and Arkansas only had a two-run lead. And this was the bottom of the eighth inning. And we know that the momentum had shifted a little bit to Oklahoma State as Arkansas started the game up 5 nothing, but Oklahoma State scored three runs, and they were seemed to have the energy and the momentum all going their way, especially with bases loaded in that regard too. And Rock Reggio, which we'll talk about him in a bit, was up to bat with bases loaded two outs, who had been killing Arkansas. I think he had close to – he's like batting over 580 in this regional, like just killing Arkansas, killing everybody. Big personality, crazy dude, freshman player, phenomenal player. But it was just like, this is the worst case scenario for Razorback baseball in this moment. But at that at bat, with the bases loaded, game on the line, regional on the line, everything, Hagen Smith struck him out swinging. Struck him out swinging. He had a full inning after that, and Arkansas was able to add on a couple insurance runs. But when that moment happened, I said, there is no way in God's green earth that Arkansas is losing now. That was Oklahoma State's moment. That was their shot. And they didn't, they didn't take advantage. Arkansas did. They won the game. They won the regional. That was one of the most impressive things I've ever seen in that moment from a Razorback baseball player in a long time. Because I can't imagine being just turning 18, mind you. Like Hagen Smith just turned 18 a few months ago. Being an 18-year-old. Everybody is watching you. The game's on the line. You're on the road. The crowd's against you. You're going up against a batter that's got a lot of passion, a lot of emotion, a lot of antics with bases loaded, and he's been killing you all regional long. And you go up in that moment, not that you just, you know, he grounds out, not that he pops up and, you know, you catch a foul ball, nothing like that. You struck him out swinging. You beat him. You beat him straight up. And that type of moment, I am hoping and I am thinking, is going to be the difference maker that takes Arkansas from being just, you know, a team that has a chance of winning it to maybe that's the type of moment that really carries the momentum and the confidence into the Super Regional against North Carolina, which is coming up, of course, this weekend. But that was just an incredible moment and an incredible thing. And I just thought that when that happens, it's like those are the types of moments that you'll remember as a Razorback baseball fan. I'm like, man, yeah, that that was a that was a ball, that was balls. That was onions, double orders, sautéed cojones to go out there and throw that type of gas late in the game against that hitter and get the regional victory. Like, just what a game and what a performance um, by Hagen Smith in there. There was a lot of them. There was a lot of great plays and great players, and so one just him. 
But that's in that moment, man, you got to give a huge shout out to that and what he was able to do. Uh, Built Bar, you got a new flavor? I mean, listen, they got so many great flavors to choose from, but they got a new one called Caramel Brownie, which who doesn't like caramel and who doesn't like brownie, especially when they're mixed together. It's like the best thing ever. You got to check it out because, I mean, listen, anytime that you can have Built Bars with that type of protein that's in it, with that limited amount of calories that taste that amazing, it seems almost too good to be true, right? Well, it's not. It is great, but not too good because it is real. And I'll tell you this, Built Bar has done so many great things when it comes to helping me out with maintaining my weight. It's not easy all the time, especially during summertime, especially when you're traveling, like I've been traveling. Uh, I've been always having Built Bar right next to me to be able to get me going in the morning. And if I need a quick snack in between games, whatever it may be, Built Bar is there for me as well. So I encourage you to try it out. They got so many different delicious flavors to choose from. Head over to Built.com right now and enter in promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off your next order. It's as simple as that. Promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off over at Built.com. You are locked on Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Okay, so final segment of the Locked On Razorbacks podcast, and I'm, I'm not going to spend too much time on this and because I don't want to like get all the people mad at me out there that may be Oklahoma State fans or anything like that, but I want to go on a little bit of a mini rant in this segment and to end this podcast. Um, I got to go to Stillwater, and I'm going to Chapel Hill this week in, in North Carolina. I actually fly out tomorrow morning, which we'll see. I mean, I'm just I'm, I'm so tired and exhausted from traveling. But, hey, it's fun. It's fun. It's a fun job, and I'm blessed and fortunate to do it, so I'm not complaining. But uh, I got to go to Stillwater this past regional, and it's the first time I've ever been to Stillwater. And I just wanted to kind of point out a few things for those of you who did not go or have not gone or maybe you did go and maybe you agree with me or whatever it may be. But I, I'm going to say this about Stillwater. Uh, the city is about what I expected. It's it's kind of on its own little island. It's small. It's a college town. It's a college town in Oklahoma. Uh, the campus is nice. The facilities, sporting wise, are nice. I mean, that stadium, no bright stadium, brand new stadium, really nice, really nice. Um, but you know, and it was about what I expected. I went to Eskimo Joe's like four times because every time somebody new wanted to go because I hadn't been. But went there, went to a few other places, went to kind of the nightlife and saw that and checked that out, which wasn't bad. But here's what I actually want to rant upon. That stadium was built brand new and has, holds about, I think it's like seven, 8,000 people. Decent sized. And not once did that stadium this past weekend even get close to being filled. Not once. Not on Saturday night when Arkansas and Oklahoma State played in a huge game. Didn't get filled on Sunday night. Didn't get filled at on monday night and monday night was the biggest crowd and it was a good decent sized crowd but it still did not get filled lots of empty seats i know that not everybody can be held to the same standard as a lot of sec schools when it comes to baseball and and everything that goes along with it but if you can't fill that stadium that you built for a regional which is the time to fill out that stadium if you can't get that filled, that's pathetic. It's pathetic. Like, and I'm not, and then again, the fans were really nice. Like they were, you know, kind of getting after it. And so it's like Arkansas fans were like, there was nothing wrong with it. They were really nice and friendly. And I'm not trying to hate on the fan base. Like, but how in God's green earth do you have that type of game, that type of situation where you're hosting a regional as a national seed and you can't fill up the ballpark? You can't even get close. For big games. And people were saying, oh, well, you know, the, the the softball teams in Oklahoma City in the College World Series. Great. They didn't play every night that that was going on. And Oak and Stillwater's what, an hour away from Oklahoma City? You're telling me that people couldn't make the trip just to see one of the games? Like, you're, you're telling me that there's just that, you're, that, that small of a fan base that the softball and the, and the baseball just can't, they can't put... I don't know what six, five, six thousand at least into their baseball stadium in Stillwater on with beautiful weather. They can't do that. It was, it was, it was gross. It was bad. And so I don't know what that's going to take. Like I couldn't imagine. I felt bad for the baseball team. I'm like, you guys had a phenomenal year and you're a great team and you got great players. You're hosting Arkansas, a really great program, and you can't get the fans to show up. That's bad. 
That was bad. I, that was the most disappointing thing I've ever seen. And I get that you can't hold everything to the same standard, but like it popped up on my timeline from just a year ago where Arkansas posted the regional and they were playing Nebraska. Again, I know they were the number one overall seed, all that stuff to go along with it. But I rewatched that Charlie Welch home run video. It still gives me chills. And I look at the crowd. I'm like, you could not find a seat. Could not find a seat. And that was in the elimination game. That was game seven. And you could not find a seat in the house for that. Like, it wasn't even a question. And honestly, I feel like if you went back and looked at the other attendance numbers for Arkansas's games, they were probably pretty close to being full, just as full as what it was that Monday night. I have no idea how, how you could justify that. So, um, but may, they, they didn't seem like they were ready to host. Like, the media accommodations were fine, but they still did not seem ready. And again, I'm not hating on anybody, not people or anything. The people were great, helpful, nice, really great. But y'all need to step up your game, fan base. Like, you need to start showing up because I think there's a really good baseball team that they had this year. And that was sad that the baseball team had to play in a 75% full stadium where they were hosting a regional. Sad, absolutely sad. You got a great product, go out and support it. But I don't know. I hope I hope Oklahoma State never hosts another regional again. Based on that, like that, like that team deserved better than what that fan base gave them. I can tell you that. So, anyways, rant over. Appreciate everybody listening into Locked On Razorbacks podcast. Be sure to like and subscribe to the podcast on iTunes or on Google Play. You can also get after me on Twitter at Buzz John Neighbors for any questions, comments, concerns that you may have. We'll keep it going from there. Same podcast time, same podcast channel tomorrow afternoon. Have a great day, everybody. We'll see you then.